Hey everyone, it's Luke from Weld Pro. Today, I've got a new video for you on running TIG with the MiG-200 multi-process welder. Now, I get a lot of questions about, how do I run TIG with this? Does it run TIG well? How does the lift start work? How do you use the gas valve? I'm going to explain all those things in this video today, so stay tuned. If you've been MiG welding with your machine, chances are you've been hooked up to a mixed gas. We need to switch that over to 100% pure argon. Now, it's important that we use 100% pure argon. If you're using a mixed gas, the CO2 in that gas can cause tungsten erosion and contamination. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my flow meter over from my mixed gas tank to my argon bottle now. First, connect your blue hose from the TIG torch to the flow meter. Use a wrench to tighten this up. Next, install the flow meter on your tank. Threading in the fitting clockwise, keep your flow meter in the vertical position. Tighten this down using a wrench. On any high pressure tank, it's important that you open the valve very slowly. We don't want to shock the flow meter. With the valve on our flow meter closed all the way, go ahead and open the valve on your torch. Then, open the valve on the flow meter slowly. You'll see that the flow begins to increase through the torch. I'm going to set this to 15 cubic feet per hour. Turn your gas valve back off and we're good to move on. For the TIG process, we need to be running DC electrode negative. We're going to go ahead and connect our ground clamp to the positive terminal on the front of the MiG-200. I love the MiG-200 because I can leave my MiG cable attached and connect my TIG torch at the same time. When energizing the machine, the TIG torch will become hot with open circuit voltage, so be careful, especially if you're in wet areas. With my TIG torch attached to the welder, I'm going to go ahead and install my consumables and my TIG parts on this torch. To assemble my TIG torch, I'm going to go ahead, drop the collet inside of the collet body, and thread my collet body into the end with the heat shield. Next, I'm going to thread on my gas cup. Don't over tighten the gas cup or you'll crack it, they're ceramic. Next, I'm going to install the back cap on the TIG torch, but I'm not going to tighten it down all the way as I still have to insert my tungsten. The last step in the process is to slide your tungsten in through the gas cup, the collet body and the collet and into the torch. We never want our tungsten stick out to exceed our cup diameter. Now, I'm using a number six cup, so that is six sixteenths of an inch in size. Therefore, I want to make sure that I keep my tungsten within six sixteenths or three eighths of the end of my cup. Tighten down the back cap to secure the tungsten. The torch is fully assembled and we're ready to move on. Before I fire up the MiG-200 and get all the settings adjusted, let me get changed into my welding gear. To set up the MiG-200 to TIG weld is actually a very simple process. We'll go ahead and energize the machine now. With the MiG-200 on, I'm gonna go ahead and switch from MiG to lift TIG mode. Now, once in lift TIG mode, I'm going to set my amperage. This is more important on this machine than on other machines. On the TIG 200, for example, you have a foot pedal so you can vary and control your amperage. With the MiG 200, we need to be fairly precise about where we set our amperage. These amperage settings will come with time and with experience, but there are some good guidelines written inside the door on the side of the machine. To run these passes today, I've prepared myself an eighth inch strip of steel. With TIG, it's very important that the material is clean. The tungsten can get easily contaminated if mill scale from hot rolled mild steel comes up off the plate and makes contact. A couple quick notes before we go ahead and strike an arc. This torch has a gas valve on it. We're going to go ahead and open this gas valve prior to touching our tungsten and lifting it off the plate. This will start our shielding gas flow ahead of the arc. Consequently, when we're done welding, we're going to leave that gas valve on for a few extra seconds and then use our fingers to turn it off. 
For this first weld, I'm going to simply perform what's known as a fusion or autogenous weld. This means I'm not going to add any filler material. I'm simply going to allow a puddle to develop, see if I like my puddle, and make any amperage changes as necessary until I feel like I have a good grip on my travel speed, my torch angle, and the overall weld pool size. The MiG-200 makes lift TIG very easy. We're simply going to touch our tungsten to the plate, lift it slowly, and the arc will establish itself. Let's go ahead. Once you've started your arc, be cautious not to let your arc length exceed 1 8 of an inch from your base material. The best thing to pay attention for when running a fusion weld is your weld pool size. Try and maintain a consistent travel speed and keep an eye on the weld pool. At this point, you might be wondering, how do I extinguish my arc? Well, that's a good question. When you want to stop or you get to the end of your weld, just snap your wrist to the side about 90 degrees. Do this very rapidly. All right, this weld came out pretty consistent. Although there's always room for improvement, it looks pretty good and looks like I kept a consistent travel speed. Now that I've got my first pass down, I'm going to go ahead and run a second pass using filler material. Pay close attention to how fast I dab the filler material, my torch angle, and my travel speed as I work the puddle around. You've probably noticed by now, I've changed out my gas cup for a stubby gas lens with a Pyrex cup. I'll explain a little more about this in later videos, but I'm doing this to help you see the weld better. It's good to practice starts and stops, or tying in. You can do this by extinguishing your arc and then re-establishing it in the crater and resuming your weld. When you get to the end of your weld, add a couple extra drops of filler material. Then back your torch up about a quarter of an inch and snap your wrist to extinguish the arc. This weld with filler came out looking pretty good. The rate at which I added the filler material was fairly consistent, so you can see that stacked dime effect. I certainly had one spot where I faltered here. Keep practicing both these types of welds. You'll get very consistent and be amazed at your weld quality. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Hopefully this tutorial helped you understand a little more about your MiG-200 and its capabilities. Weld Pro is committed to releasing lots of tutorial and how-to videos to help you better understand welding in general and your particular machine. If you hadn't had the chance already, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay informed with the latest videos. Thanks again, and as always, we here at Weld Pro can't wait to see what you build with your MiG-200.